How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another YouTube video. So today is going to be an update to my outdoor setup. I actually did some upgrades to it. I'm going to show you guys all the upgrades. I'll have all the links. I use some of the same stuff as before, but I, basically I changed from the J mount, which is the mount I used in the previous video to a fiberglass paint stick, which I heard some good reviews on uh, in the helium discord. So I'm going to get into that. But before we do get started, please make sure that you guys like subscribe, turn on your post notifications to be notified when I upload new videos. So in my previous video, I kind of discussed all the materials I'm gonna use uh, actually in hand, but a lot of it's already up there. Actually, everything is already set up, so I don't have it with me, but I'm gonna show you guys what I used and what I bought new. So didn't use the WineGuard DC 2000 Universal mount. This is the mount that I took off. I didn't use this, I returned that cable. I still use this lightning arrester, had no problems with it. It worked out really well. If I go here, this is the mount that I use. I actually bought two of them and you'll see in the videos I have of the actual setup. I have two and I put one up here and I flipped one and put it down here. It comes with this pipe and I actually have a good picture right here. It comes with uh, two brackets, two U-bolts uh, and this pipe right here, but I don't use the pipe because the paint stick is going to be the, the pipe, essentially. Um, and then I offset them by a certain amount of distance. And then I slid the pole down so it's offset so the entire weight is not all the way up in the air. There's some beneath the bracket, so it kind of it kind of counter counters the weight there. Because it is not too heavy, but when you're handling it that high, uh, it, it can be affected by wind. You want to make sure it's secure. So I also bought 10, number 10, um, or I bought eight number 10 two inch stainless phillips flathead bolts i bought these at hardware store you guys can get them at a hardware store or or uh, online on amazon i'll have the link for these in the description one thing i wanted to note about these this is just a personal thing i absolutely hate screws they always strip no matter what bit i use i've never had like a good tool set for for actual screws i have everything but screws and drill bits uh but basically with these i pre-drilled the holes because otherwise if you're putting this into your wall uh, on the side of your house you want to make sure you pre-drill those holes because these screws are tough to get in without pre-drilled holes because if you guys don't know pre-drilled holes essentially gets rid of the excess uh wood that would be there otherwise you're just kind of compacting it when you put the screw in and it's getting in the threads much easier to pre-drill the hole just make sure you don't pre-drill it bigger than the actual screw thread size. Next is the extension pole. There were a lot of options when I went here. I decided to go with the minimum of four feet and the maximum of eight feet. I extended it probably about six feet. I didn't go all the way to the furthest notch. The reason I bought this one, yes, it is a little bit expensive. I bought it though because it has this locking mechanism. So all I have to do is push my thumb. It slides up and it's super easy and I have it extended not all the way like I said I have it extended I want to say like three-fourths of the way this is so that it actually adds some rigidity in the actual fiberglass pole another great thing about this you don't have to worry too much about it being a massive lightning rod in the sky because it's reinforced it's aluminum and it is reinforced around with fiberglass so really awesome um there is a 16 foot one, eight to 16 feet. It's $37. If you guys are looking for something like that, uh, I would say go for it. If you want to have it like lower on your roof so you have easier access, but then extend it all the way, that's another great option. I also switched out my grounding rod. A lot of people were complaining about this in my previous video saying, oh, you need a better grounding rod, all this stuff. I bought a bigger grounding rod about the eight foot one. The thing is, I can't get this thing in the ground. I got like three feet in the ground and then it's just rock. There's there's nothing for me to actually get this in. I have it still sticking out of the ground. You'll see that later in the video. I I have to work like day every day to try and hammer this thing into the ground because it is rough. Uh, I've seen a lot of people, they put them in, it's like boom, 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 super easy. I have a mallet. I would really appreciate like a slide hammer because I could just like slide it down and really hammer that thing into the ground. That is it for all of the new stuff besides the new LMR 400 cable, which I bought from USA Coax. You can also use code Helium 
to get a discount. I believe it's 5%. There is LMR 400 Ultra Flex and LMR 400. The only difference is LMR 400 Ultra Flex. It's a little bit more flexible. It's a little bit more costly as well. So I just stuck with the LMR 400. It's the same stuff other than the flexibility. And I bought 25 feet. I know, I know, 25 feet, that's a lot. It's going to cause some uh, DBI loss. Not too worried about it. The reason I got 25 feet, and I'll show that later, is because initially my miner was in the attic. Now, with the long cable, I can actually have my miner inside of the house, right beneath the attic staircase, which is awesome. Now I don't have to worry about heat in the summer and freezing temperatures in the winter. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. So right now I'm taking down the old mount that I had put up previously about a week and a half ago to put up the new mount. One thing I did forget to mention is the actual clamp holding the antenna onto the new pole and to the previous pole is going to be the same. They come with the antenna when you buy it, so nothing to worry about there. Now this is the same as before. I have aluminum siding. You guys might have similar siding. I have to puncture the aluminum because the screws themselves will not make it through. So I take a hammer and a nail, mark out the holes, and I punch those holes so I can actually pierce the wood underneath. As I mentioned earlier, a big problem I was having was when I was screwing in the screws, no matter what bit I was using, they kept jumping. I've never had good luck with actual Phillips head screws. I always strip them, so they're always a one-time use for me. I ended up uh, just getting angry and going full throttle with the drill and I got them all in as you'll see coming up. Oh, come on. Busted? Yeah. Yeah, I do have a question. How are you going to mount the antenna? Don't look at me with that smart face. Give me the antenna. <laughs> I was thinking I was gonna slide this all the way down and yeah. then set it, but it's still too it's high. Too high. <laughs> Watch your camera with your pole. Yeah, how are you gonna mount the antenna? So I'm gonna talk about the finished product in the next clip, but here's a picture of it. This is the thumbnail I actually have for the video. The camera died as I was about to put it into the mount. So just a few tips for you guys that are going to do this yourself. You're not going to necessarily lose your balance, but it is very hard holding the uh, fully extended pole with one hand. Uh, I was holding, you know, an eight foot pole with one hand. Luckily, uh, it, nothing bad happened, but just just be careful. Make sure your, your mounts are loose enough that you can slide the pole in easily and then worry about tightening it later. So I slid the pole all the way down uh, up until the locking, the thumb lock, and then I pushed it up to where I wanted to it. Lightly tightened one of them so I could get it kind of positioned and then the pole wouldn't slide and then I went back down and tightened everything securely. All right, everybody, so this is where the old one used to mount. And it went up to like, you know, where the top of the pole is where you can see now. And that's what I got now, so. It is, I wanna say two to three times higher. I've kind of got a drip loop here. The water is not gonna, I'm gonna silicone that hole. A lot of people are complaining, saying I need a drip loop. I really think that's personal preference because I've had plenty of lines like this in my car and all. if I silicone the hole, there's no leaks. So that's, that's what I've learned, so. It's up there, got about 25 feet of LMR 400. It's a lot I know might cause some DBI loss, but only time will tell. And then I'm running it down. Once again, this is still temporary stuff. I have to get better, uh, better cable attachment there, but everything's zip tied. And I just gotta connect it on the inside and I should be up and running. This is ridiculous. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, I, I don't care what people think. Eight foot grounding rod. That's ridiculous. No. Maybe not, maybe in real areas, but here it's just like, yeah, no, I put that it's like there. complete rock. All right, guys, so this is the final setup with the Bobcat. You guys can see now it's finally inside. This is what I was talking about in the beginning of the video. Super happy with how this turned out. Even though I had to use 25 feet of LMR 400, it's 100% worth it. I mean, it's inside now. I can see the status of it when it goes down. 
this was a serious problem before when my miner actually went down. Didn't know because it was in the attic. I had a yellow light for like two days, didn't even realize. And now it's easy access. If there's anything wrong with it, I can just unscrew the power, unscrew the coax and look at the miner, fix it. The antenna came disconnected on the inside one time. So now it's super easy to fix. Really happy with it. So that's it. I hope you guys did enjoy my little update on to my antenna. As of right now, I have had zero earnings in the past 72 hours. That's due to Bobcat just being super messed up. Made the previous video on how to fast sync. I wish I knew that literally three days ago because it would have made my life a lot easier. But once again, I'm going to make an update on this. Hopefully with this increased height, I got about six feet uh, more in height. Now I should be well over all the houses near me, over a few trees, I hope at least at the top of the trees so it won't be as difficult with the signal blockage. Hopefully my witnesses go up, my earnings go up, and I provide better coverage for the network. I will provide probably a two-week update and then a four-week update if there's a massive difference. But that is it for this video. If you guys did enjoy it, please make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. If you have any questions, comment down below. Any thoughts, any suggestions, also comment them down below. Still working on getting that grounding rod in. It is rough. Uh, I'm probably going to wait for a storm, like a, a rain, hopefully no thunder or lightning. Wait for that, and then I can hammer it down once the ground is a little bit softer. But I really do think I hit like a, a mass of rocks, so I, I can't move it at all. But I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day.